Comedy Cthulhu seems like a thoroughly unexplored avenue for adventure games, which must be why Stuck in Attic decided to come out with Gibbous a Cthulhu Adventure. This is one of many games I saw at Adventure X 2018 that was slated for an early 2019 release. Spoilers, I think the first of them came out in May, and I don't count early and first half as the same thing. Game dev is hard, folks, especially for tiny teams. But back to Gibbous. It's available on Steam and GOG for Windows, Mac and Linux. Worth noting that while subtitles are available in the multitude of languages shown here, the developers are having some ongoing problems with the Russian, Japanese and Korean subtitles. Apparently their original translator kind of screwed them on that front. Patches are coming, but at the time of writing, those translations aren't final. With that out of the way, on to the game. We kick off with a cult gathering, one frightfully enthusiastic leader and what appears to be his merry band of middling to industrial strength Vijits. Their goal is to track down the Necronomicon for probably quite evil purposes, they usually are, and they think they've found just the man for the job. The next cutscene heavily implies that man to be a private detective named Don Archetype, Heavy Sai, who monologues about the job he's on and how the world has changed, all in the traditional PI style. Let's face it, we would have been disappointed if he hadn't. He's also about to find that he picked the wrong day to quit vaping. Fun fact, you really do need to cut a hole in your teeth to use those things, true story. As he arrives at an ancient library, we've got a pretty good idea of what to expect from this guy. If someone hadn't left a bomb for him outside the library, knocked him unconscious without killing him somehow, and then dragged him off into the presumably permanent night of the town of Darkham. Surprise, you're now playing as Buzz Kerwin, humble librarian and with a little digging through the rubble, new owner of THE Necronomicon. Being an adventure game protagonist, he immediately takes the most evil object in the world home to read a passage out loud and make his cat start talking. He didn't actually mean to do that, that's just what happened. She's about as happy with this situation as she is about being named Kitteth, so needless to say that's your first task. Restore cat to being cat. Hopefully that story section makes two things clear. One, the game doesn't take itself very seriously, like at all, and two, the game has some very nice fluid hand-drawn animation. A bit like if they decided to do our HD remaster of Discworld 2 without changing the art style. I still prefer to show footage and let you make up your own mind rather than spend time talking about graphics, and I'm aware I'm breaking that rule quite often, but it's worth noting in this case. The animation is really nice, no major missteps, no Zelda CDI horror to be found here. Of course, flashy visuals are no use unless there's a decent game to be found underneath, although pushing visuals at the expense of complicated gameplay is kind of a founding tenant of the genre, but never mind. So those controls then. A two button coin interface here, which gives you examine, some kind of interaction depending on context, and... cat. Not enough games let you apply a cat to the situation, I'm just saying. A cat who talks, by the way, don't know if I mentioned that. The interaction verb, as I said, will vary by context. Could be use, could be pick up, it depends. I feel like I should be rallying more against the use of a verb coin than I am, really, but it doesn't get in the way. The verb icons are close enough that there's not much time lost moving between them. What can I say other than it works? You even get multiple messages by examining hotspots repeatedly. I don't think any of those are mandatory, hence why I'm not immediately getting annoyed at this discovery. It goes from unnecessary work to fun extra dialogue if you want to, just like that. Even if it were mandatory to see every line, there's a different icon for when you've seen all the examined messages on offer, so you know up front. That's good stuff, very user friendly. Oh, and you can highlight hotspots with which to use that coin interface with the spacebar, and press number keys on the keyboard to select dialogue responses in order. This is all good and I like it. More interestingly to me, right click zooms. Just zooms in. Makes things larger doesn't enhance. Now I've caught myself leaning in to check a background detail more than once with adventure games, so if this were to become a genre standard feature, I wouldn't complain, and neither would my lower back. Actually, it might complain anyway, but that's beside the point. It's such a simple feature, I'm surprised it hasn't featured in more modern point and click games. That said, I have no idea how you'd pull this off in AGS, so maybe that's the reason. A lot of people may have moved over to Unity these days, but not all of them. As it happens, this game was made in Unity, as the standard launcher window gives away, so I imagine it's much more trivial on that engine. Speaking of the launcher, make sure you set that graphics preset up high before you play, because unlike some games which leave the default settings in place, this does make a difference, and it can make those two hours of footage you already recorded kind of unrepresentative. Your circumstances may vary, of course, by your available computing power or by a desire for shiny. Though what you mainly get from having it cranked up are shadows projected from the characters. 
as far as I can see anyway. Without all that, it still looks like a solid hand-drawn HD adventure game. So don't worry too much if your aging laptop can't quite handle it. If you have to lower that graphics preset, it won't ruin your fun. But I digress, back to the controls. Inventory pops out from the bottom, either by middle mouse click, the I key, or clicking this triangle in the corner. From there, you can click to select an item and use it elsewhere, click once to get the verb coin on the item, even if it only ever had the examine verb when I tried it, or right click to bypass said verb coin and just examine the damn item anyway. One thing I do want to mention is that the inventory doesn't hide itself away automatically, and I actually prefer it this way around. There are situations where I'd like to keep the inventory open for easy access. That's maybe worth considering as an option, I guess. Reckon there's a fair few folk who'd rather the inventory quietly sneaks away when not in use. Oh, and you can double click to either make your character walk quickly or to warp through exits. Yay! I've never gotten an achievement for warping through an exit before, that's new. So visuals and mechanics are solid, I feel. Great looking game, controls aren't cumbersome. A fine start, yet only about half of the experience. To reiterate, there's a comedic tone to the whole thing. Characters have pithy one-liners, jokes and puns in their dialogue. They also don't mind breaking the fourth wall, there's a notable amount of meta humour through the whole run. So if you're looking for a deeply respectful interpretation of Lovecraft, this is the other thing. Better to think of it as a point-and-click game with a Cthulhu skin on top. This also includes the trappings of several other point-and-clicks that don't take themselves seriously, where the puzzles seem to be there for the sake of having puzzles rather than making sense in the story. Although, as Richard Cobbett noted, the game has the best possible reasoning behind a character not doing an action because it's the wrong time in the plot to do so. That character is a cat, and they need a pretty good justification for doing selfless deeds. But back to the puzzles. The majority of them made sense, and they range from traditional fetch quest, item combination and dialogue up to something you might find in a mist game, and I'm not making that statement lightly. Some of them didn't gel with me. I can't put my finger on it, but I spent a long time in the first act after the prologue trying to figure out how to proceed. There is a hint system, taking the form of reading a notebook or asking your talking cat what to do, but it's less specific than I'd like. A statement of an overall goal rather than a more immediate task, it was a little too high level for me. That said, I didn't try it much after that first time in chapter 1. After getting over that initial hurdle, I didn't have a problem with the rest of the puzzles. Except one, near the end of chapter 4. No spoilers, but it involves a bookcase. I had to look up the solution and I still didn't understand how to solve it until I saw my friend, the Space Quest historian, getting hints from one of the developers. Turns out it's possible with a lot of very specific attention and not disregarding non-interactive texts in a foreign language. Whichever way you want to go through it, good luck with that one. And further on than that, we have one of those puzzles where it takes far less time to discover the solution than it does to actually implement it. In fact, you're pretty much given the solution straight up and then you have to go through this long sequence to put it into action. A cycle of click, click, watch animation that repeats longer than it should. So the puzzles weren't the highlight of the piece, sad to say. They go up and down in both difficulty and logical sense. So I guess this leaves us with a fully voiced, wonderfully animated comedy game with inconsistent puzzle design and a talking cat. I feel like you could do worse things with your £15.49, honestly. The whole experience seems like it'll last you around six hours, which I'm having to base on the length of other people's playthroughs because my Steam profile says 15 hours, and even I didn't spend that long with the bookcase puzzle. Must have left the game on overnight or something. Anyway, on a purely price to time ratio, that seems about right to me. The click to click gameplay is also solid with the odd extra feature thrown in. So the only thing really bringing it down for me is the puzzles, and there's always a walkthrough to get through the parts that are hard to make sense of. Calling the entire title a shame or a disappointment feels like a massive dismissal of everything that it gets right, which is really quite a lot if I hadn't made that obvious. The unfortunate reality is that the puzzles aren't as good as the rest of it. But it's got a talking cat, which you cannot pet. So about that room, we's all booked. See that pilgrim standing over there? Him and his kind done booked up every single room except the one. About to arrive any minute now. Otherwise, I love to serve you. <laughs> Maybe it's me. But